At full afterburner, the F-22 Raptor burns through nearly 46 pounds of fuel per second. And that is exactly why afterburners are not used nearly as much as you probably think. Modern turbofan engines work by using a big fan at the front of the engine to suck air in and force some of it down into a compressor, where it's mixed with fuel and then ignited inside the combustion chamber. Now, once ignited, that air-fuel mixture expands, creating a ton of pressure that's then forced through a turbine that's used to mechanically power that fan and compressor up front before exiting out the jet's nozzle in the back as thrust. But some aircraft need even more power than you can get using this conventional and pretty efficient method, usually tactical aircraft like fighter jets, so they often also have an afterburner in each engine, which in very simple terms is sort of like just adding another fuel injector into the stream of outflowing exhaust. The injector sprays fuel into that exhaust stream, which combines with the remaining air in it and ignites again, even further expanding that exhaust gas and creating even more pressure or thrust to be pushed out the back. Now, afterburners are a great way to dramatically increase the power output of a jet engine, and they've been known to increase thrust by 50% or more in some applications, but they also come at a very serious cost. Afterburners are just incredibly inefficient because while well, you're spraying a fire hose of fuel into the exiting exhaust of a jet engine. But just how inefficient are they? Well, fighter pilots straight up cannot afford to go cruising around with their afterburners roaring. In fact, in just about any fighter jet you can think of, use of the afterburner has to be limited to a few short minutes at most. The F-22 Raptor, as a great example, is powered by a pair of very capable and pretty darn efficient Pratt & Whitney F-119 turbofan engines, each of which is capable of producing 22,000 pounds of thrust without its afterburners engaged, and a whopping 35,000 pounds of thrust with your proverbial pedal to the metal. Now, that is more power output under afterburner than even the legendary SR-71 could muster. But how long could the Raptor actually fly under full afterburner, as opposed to flying without it? Well, according to Pratt & Whitney's design specifications, the F-119 turbofan engine has a dry, or non-afterburning SFC, or specific fuel consumption rate, of just about 0.61 pounds of fuel per pound of thrust per hour per engine. And don't worry, I'm going to do this math for you, just follow along with me here. So that means that at max power without afterburners, we can multiply that 0.61 pounds of fuel against 22,000 pounds of thrust to get 13,420 pounds of fuel burned per hour per engine. Now, with two engines on board and divided by 60 minutes, that shakes out to just over 447 pounds of fuel burned per minute. And with an internal fuel capacity of 18,000 pounds, that only gives us a little over 40 minutes of flying under full, non-afterburning power before your Raptor runs out of gas. But just to clarify, that doesn't mean the Raptor only has about 40 minutes worth of fuel on board. It means that the Raptor can only fly at open throttle full throttle without its afterburners for about 40 minutes before it expends all its fuel. The same way if you were to drive around town with your foot on the floor, your gas mileage would really suffer. But the maximum SFC, or specific fuel consumption for these engines under afterburner, is a mind-boggling 2.35 pounds of fuel per pound of thrust per hour per engine. So, we multiply our max SFC of 2.35 by the total 70,000 pounds of thrust from both engines, and we get 164,000 pounds of fuel burned per hour, or roughly 2,742 pounds of fuel per minute. Now, that means that with a full tank of fuel, an F-22 could fly for just over six and a half minutes under full afterburner before it burned every drop of fuel it had on board. 
Now, these are rough back-of-the-envelope numbers, and other variables would need to be considered to get a really accurate measurement, but these figures are close enough to give us a sense of just how inefficient afterburners really are, and just how sparingly they have to be used. Though some aircraft, like the F-22 in particular, can circumvent some of this problem thanks to its ability to supercruise, or to sustain supersonic speeds above Mach 1.5 without the use of its afterburners, allowing Raptors to cover a lot more ground much more quickly than many other fighters could. In fact, according to some reports, the Raptor can fly at speeds as high as Mach 1.76 without its afterburners, meaning the Raptor can fly faster without its afterburners than a lot of fighters, like the F-35, can fly with their afterburners at full tilt. But don't let that fool you, because the F-35 is no slouch. It's powered by a single Pratt & Whitney F-135 afterburning turbofan engine that produces 28,000 pounds of thrust dry and a whopping 43,000 pounds of thrust under afterburner. But even more importantly, the F-35A and C each carry nearly as much fuel as the F-22 Raptor does for its two engines, and as a result, the F-35 can fly under afterburner for quite a bit longer, maybe better than 10 minutes. And while not every nation releases this information about its fighters or its turbofan technology, enough of them have to get a reasonable basis for comparison. The Eurofighter Typhoon, for instance, is powered by two Eurojet EJ-200 turbofan engines, each of which can produce 13,500 pounds of thrust dry, or about 20,200 pounds of thrust under afterburner. And based on the fuel on board, it can probably fly under afterburner for a bit better than eight minutes. The Mirage 2000 is powered by a single M53 P2 afterburning turbofan that pumps out 14,500 pounds of thrust dry and 21,400 pounds of thrust under afterburner, and it may well be able to fly under afterburner for more than nine minutes. The F-15E Strike Eagle is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW220 afterburning turbofan engines, each of which pump out 14,590 pounds of thrust dry and 23,770 pounds of thrust under afterburner. And with internal fuel alone, it can probably fly under full burn for about six to maybe seven minutes, but with added conformal fuel tanks, you could stretch that out to around nine. Likewise, with the F-22 Raptor itself, with its 600-gallon underwing drop tanks, you could probably fly under afterburner for a bit better than nine minutes before you became a glider. My good friend, former F-16 pilot turned F-35 pilot Hazard Lee, once told me about flying his F-16 under afterburner over the Yellow Sea and watching his fuel flow rate climb to 50,000 pounds of fuel burn per hour in an aircraft that can only carry 7,000 pounds of fuel. That means he had between eight and nine minutes at that fuel burn before his fighter jet became a very expensive glider. So, while afterburners can be incredibly valuable tools during takeoff or when accelerating to supersonic speeds or even in combat, they have to be used strategically, like hitting the NOS button in a Fast and Furious movie, rather than treating them like an additional gear that you could just shift into when you're in a hurry. 